Hey guys, welcome to the Singles Talk Show. I'm Gabby. Michael. This is Michael. Ooh, and and a- Kevin. AKA K Dog. Oh no! <laughs> oh, guys! Oh, <laughs> between oh, us! Ruined, no. <laughs> if you guys don't know, uh, we. we oh, he, yeah, he had a. Uh, we, we always convene together before we do these talk shows and we say, all right, guys. Sorry, what are some of these discussions <laughs> no, that are going right. to go down? What's the question? It's too soon. And he just so happened to have his name listed on this sheet <laughs> as K hyphen dog with two G's, right? The old double G. It was G. supposed to be a joke, guys. Oh, it was fuck. supposed to be a hey, joke. Gabby, but I'll take Gabby it. Took it out. K dog. So. K dog. Oh my nice goodness. To see you, Thanks, bro. <laughs> But anyways, we're here leaders in the singles ministry at Faith Assembly, and we have our talk show here every week, 8.30 on Tuesdays. So for the next couple of weeks, we're going to be going over Pastor Lester's devotional, Your mm-hmm. Life, which has been amazing. Yes, it has Amen. Been. And I know last week we had an amazing guest speaker, Daniel Adams. Daniel Adams. Woo! What yeah. a powerful testimony. It, the revelation has still just stuck with yeah. me since uh, of just the whole concept of the watchers. But let me not go into that right oh, now. Oh, the, the three a.m. It's just so good. That was uh, really good. I'm I'm still impacted by the whole. Hey, do you know Daniel Adams? And the, oh like my the, goodness! The whole that ah, Beautiful. your name. What was it? He said that your name is attributed like to Jesus, or it's not. Uh, or yeah. to something else completely, and demons and they they know like they know what you're affiliated with, and so when you Absolutely. rock with Jesus, yeah. it's like, hey, do you know Gabby Triono? And then suddenly they start to manifest, manifest, uh, because because <laughs> she knows Jesus, <laughs> and she does. <laughs> yeah, but Kevin, did you want to share some socials coming up? I did. I want to share some socials, but also a little bit more about Live Out Loud. Mm-hmm. So we at the Curry Ford campus meet every Sunday morning at 10.25 a.m. We usually have a fun time there, right, guys? A great time of discipleship. I think that's what distinguishes us from every other singles community. Mm -hmm. Majority of the time, it's just fellowship, 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 but no actual discipleship. There's no roots or core uh, of it. So that's really Mm -hmm. cool. But then also, if you're on the Redbug campus, my wife and I have recently, with Live Out Loud, started facilitating a new singles group out there that meets the second and fourth Thursday of every month. We're currently about to start this Thursday, our first time. We wow. had we had to postpone, but we're starting this Thursday, Praise going God. through the singles edition of Love Five Love Languages, mm. which is an, a tremendous mm. read. My brother's right got it here. here, right here. Look yeah. at that, and uh, we're truly excited to be starting that. But uh, as far as socials go, we have one social left for April. And that is uh, Alex Bonilla's Avengers Ooh. movie. Yes, uh, we're gonna go to see Avengers on the 29th, and it's gonna be an awesome time. I believe we're gonna go see it at Fashion Square. Fashion Square the premiere cinemas, I believe, is what the theater's called, yeah. and it's there at the Fashion Off Square. Oh yeah, Sunday night at I believe seven o'clock. Just check your Facebook events yeah. on Live Out Loud, and you'll yeah. Alex know what it is Alex is commenting now oh. <laughs> Alex feel free to share the details my hey friend. Alex yes love that guy and Alex is actually not a live out loud leader but he's taking it upon himself to host a social yes. so if any of you are interested in ever hosting a social feel yes. free just to uh, private message myself or live out loud and let us know what you want to do we'd be happy to promote it amen and then yeah. uh, lastly we have my favorite event happening it's not in april it's may 5th live out loud yes. reach live out loud reach daniel adams will be our guest speaker Amen. and it's just going to be a tremendous time come and i i recommend if you just want to learn how to express and share uh jesus in in everyday life come this is for you it'll be from 9 to 12 in the morning and then we're going to have a little bit of time of outreach yes. and then during the evening we'll have We'll have a time of testimonies. But what uh, are we calling it? Glory party. Glory right? yes. <laughs> party. That's a dog. Completely. Sorry. Glory Blue party. There. Is there going to be desserts there too or something like that? Some of Lester's famous. We may. So I was oh. talking to Pastor about that today. Okay. We're thinking of changing venues and perhaps even meeting at Disney Springs or just oh. at another restaurant where we can be oh out gosh. in the open. Wow. We're always here on campus, but right. why not just bring it out there and share testimony and love Amen. and love have idea. kind of like that effect that we um, mm-hmm. Daniel Adams' testimony did at the mall with yeah. other people asking what's happening. 
Right. Why not yeah. share that That's, with everyone else? I love Perfect. that idea. Guys have to be out there. Yes, be there. 9 a.m. I mean, register now. Like, start registering. It's free registration. You can just go on the Live Out Loud reach in Live Out Loud on the events, and it'll take you to the links. Just register and be there. It's going to be a blast. Yeah, it's free. Yeah, it's free. It's super free. I mean, yeah. it's so free. And it's beautiful because if you love, like, the whole purpose is just to love the person in front of you and to be able to show them Jesus, to give them that. And if you've done that, you know, whether you're shy, uh, whether you're just like not a people person, uh, we're there to be able to learn and to be able to fellowship with one another. And so in case Gabby, myself and Kevin, if we decide to partner off and go have lunch, let's say we just want to get some dim sum at some Chinese place. Oh my We goodness, get to yes. love people in that lunch break. And so it's not like a strict, you know, you got to be here, you got to be here. No, it's whatever your group wants to do. Yeah. Whatever the Lord wants to do. If the group ends up praying and God leads them somewhere, yeah. hey, let it be. It's going to be really free uh, and really just amazing. So, so exciting. There. Yes. <laughs> Brother, well, while, while I've got you, why don't you tell us about today's topic? Ooh, today's topic. So excited topic. about that. All right. So today's topic is really exciting. Uh, we're in week four of the Year of Life. L last week, we did have Daniel Adams, and we were able to get to know more about his testimony and also understand our place as ambassadors of Christ. Yeah. Uh, and, and as ambassadors being someone who represents him uh, almost to the point where whenever like let's say I was supposed to go to somewhere and then I talk to someone if I'm an ambassador it would be as if Jesus is speaking to that person on behalf of me I am there to represent him and so today Lester in week four talked about boundaries and so for today's yes. topic he's gonna be setting boundary lines for singles now normally when we think about boundaries, we sometimes think in the singles perspective of, oh, okay, we, we shouldn't do this and shouldn't do that because if we go past this line, yeah. things may get worse off. Sure. Now, that's very, very true. The thing is that in regards to setting boundary lines for singles, it's very important to make sure that spiritually, our line, the boundary line that we make sure that it's established that our old self when we come to Christ something happens right. we're born again and so to be born again means that the old life that we had is is just cut off so here's my old life and then suddenly here's a line this is where I'm born again mm -hmm. and now I have this whole new space that I get to be filled and renewed in my mind with the knowledge of Christ and this is where the new life begins now as we grow in, in as Christians and as life and we face all kinds of circumstances that line needs to be held intact or else we risk it getting blurred yes so what happens when you blur the line when you blur the line you start inviting the things of the old into the new life which is already done away with the old life is already gone actually Paul even talks about it in Philippians 3:13 he ends up saying that he hasn't achieved perfection, but he uh, goes forward to attain all that he has in Christ, forgetting everything that's in the past. And uh, like Paul, he murdered yeah. people. I mean, I, don't, I haven't murdered anybody yet. Uh, I don't yet. know about. I mean, I mean, yeah, I would hope. I, 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 by yet, I mean murder people like the devil uh, yes. and all his demons. Amen. Except you know, we just cast them out. We don't actually like slay. But anywho. Dang, you guys are catching on to me. Oh, we got man. you, bro. Man, they got me. Yeah, I got to watch out with my vocabulary here on Facebook. Uh, anywho, <laughs> uh, with that, it's one of the things is that Paul being a murderer, like Jesus still met him. Yeah. Like he had such mercy with Paul. And Paul ends up getting saved. And initially, I can only imagine how hard it is because you have all these other Christians that were persecuted mm -hmm. by Paul. And they're like, whoa, Paul, like he's saved now? How? Like, right. no, like I don't believe that. I don't believe that he's a Christian. So he must have faced a lot of persecution in there. And so he had to grow also in establishing that boundary line, growing in Christ, growing in the learning that the old life has passed away. He even says that in Romans, right. uh, Romans what, 6, 7, and 8, where he says reckon, to reckon yourself dead to sin and alive in Christ. Because as we're born again, we're resurrected with Christ's power. Mm -hmm. What do you guys think of, about that, about setting that boundary line uh, where spiritually? 
Yeah. What do you guys think about that? I think it's definitely important. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Because when we accept Jesus, right, there has to be some, we can't be living our old life. Mm -hmm. Like what First Corinthians talks about, the new, we're a new being. And we have to ask ourselves the question, like, yeah, we accept Jesus, but has our life, does our life look different? Mm -hmm. Do we see that? Yeah. Right? It's not just, yeah, believing that God exists, but does our life display the newness? And that's where those boundaries become really important. Mm. Um, and then even as it pertains to singles, uh, as, as long as we're talking about the spiritual side of it, we're not just talking about boundaries of, can't I, I shouldn't be going out this late with a certain person. Mm -hmm. But uh, as it pertains to spiritually, which is what God put on my heart today to talk about, mm. was a, as I'm dating, it not to blur the lines and sacrifice on my relationship with him. Right. Well, that's so good. good. Yes. Yeah. So I'd love to talk about that later and expand upon it. Yeah, yeah. we'll get there. We'll get there in the Q and A time. That's good. Uh, but so with this with this whole boundary line thing, uh, Lester really makes a great point in the sense that as we're being renewed in our mind, as we, I mean, take inventory for yourselves, guys. Uh, what are some things of the old life? If if those things are resurfacing, how about grab a piece of paper and then like put old life, all that stuff, the stuff that you did before, and then just write that down in that area and then put in new life in the other section and then in new life start writing what are things that God has done in your life what are things that uh, maybe character improvements maybe you okay. weren't so patient before in your old life and then suddenly like you're patient maybe you used to curse a lot in your old life and then suddenly somehow you find yourself not even cursing like there's track these things put them on paper reflect on them and right. then write that line down like right in the middle of it or actually, I mean, you can even just rip apart the old life and just burn it uh, in a fire, in a barbecue, or whatever, because like that, it's right. gone. Right. Mm -hmm. And just to be able to know that that's gone, and when you actually take time to reflect on that and praise God for the new life that you have, right. those lines will never be blurred. You'll never end up riding the line. You know, like, I know for me, like, growing in this, in Christ, there was many times where I would just ride the line where it's like, okay, I got my foot on the old life here and then I have my foot on the new life here but Lord yeah. I mean I, I, I don't trust you quite yet on this matter so I'm going to be on this side of the line that's not what God wants for us I mean actually the wages of sin is death like anything outside of him it's just not good right. and so if Amen. we're in that side in that line uh, we'll be robbed of so many good things that the Father wants to bestow upon us mm -hmm. Come um, on. It's it's he's amazing and one of the tips really one of the great things is to declare the new life that we have in Christ that's good uh, if we see the Psalms we see David we see so many psalmists declaring yeah. the goodness of the Lord all of his works and how the generations will praise him for all the works like generation mm -hmm. upon generation in order for another generation to praise God for the works in prior generations like the prior generation needs to talk about it vocally needs yes. to so instill it in their minds so that they would know hey by the way this is the father that we serve. He did this and he did this. And so I can only imagine as children right. taking these things from the father and the mother, they'll be able to like, wow, God, you did that for my family and for mm. my parents. God, I know you want to do it for me too. And oh, that's the oh, heart yeah. that we ought to have. And just uh, for scriptural basis, uh, Colossians 3.16 and Ephesians 5.19 they actually talk about that, where uh, we come together, especially in Colossians uh, 3.16. Mm -hmm. If there's any spiritual song, any psalms, any hymns, like just just do it out. Blurt it out for the world to know. Don't feel shy. Don't be ashamed. You may not have a great voice, but just rock with it anyway. If the Holy Spirit is prompting you to, to sing just a random spiritual song, maybe even hum, that's, that's there. That's scriptural. That's what we're to do. Uh, we're to let the word of Christ so richly dwell inside of us mm -hmm. so that whenever we're faced with some kind of circumstance, we're able to proclaim and declare, God, I thank you. This is what your truth says. This is what the circumstance says. Your truth overcomes this. Right. Boom. Come on. And so as we do that, as we encourage one another and exhort one another, there is no way that we will ever live in the gray area, live in the blurred lines because we will clearly know like this is old this is new old is done away new has come and so I say that as an encouragement to anyone even anyone right now viewing this or would listen to later 
if you guys are living in shame in guilt and condemnation maybe you did something that you weren't supposed to do come back to the father all you, all you have to do is just go back to him and god i'm sorry just repent change the way that you think and as you declare these things as you declare that you are made new in christ mm -hmm. that you are loved by the lord like while we yet we were yet sinners mm -hmm. god loved us and sent his son to die for you when we dwell in these verses in these words and we start asking you know god like in prayer god what do you think of me lord show me in the word god you know and what would lead me holy yes. spirit because he's your teacher as we apply these concepts we're less prone to living from the old life we're less prone to crossing the line and actually more prone to living and growing from glory to glory as the word says that we are becoming that's so good now with that said these boundary lines like they, they're clearly established yes. and we have to remember that not only do they guide us spiritually but again talking about the singles narrative here yes these anything spiritual affects the natural right. state yeah. obviously we know that sin leads to death Jesus in John, uh, the guy from the Bethesda pool, after he heals him, he tells him, go and sin no more, lest a worse thing comes upon you. Mm. So sin is attributed to sickness right then and there. I mean, granted, we see that in the fall of man, but we see that. So if we see that there, then we also understand that this whole blurring the lines, this whole making sure that boundary lines are established, that also plays a part in the singles perspective, which leads us to what we're going to be talking about. So Kevin, would you like to introduce today's discussion absolutely man you just got me so hyped up for this conversation today it's really good bro holy spirit it's evident that he is speaking to you on today's conversation and even just in this book it's incredible mm -hmm. to see that we're, we're beginning this perspective from god's point of view mm -hmm. and we're not just looking at it from a fleshly um, narrative yes and so that's what i love yes. about what we're talking about today and so today's question in fact is what were some boundary lines you struggled to keep as a single person? How did God's wisdom keep you from blurring the lines? Mm. We'll go to Gabby in just a minute, but I want you to think about this question. And what I want you to think about is how you're going to respond. And we'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. Yes. As you see, I've got the laptop in front of me. So you are just as part of the conversation as anyone here. And if you have any questions directed to any of us, just type the name, dash, in your question. All right, or if you want to send it privately, more than welcome to. We'll be happy to reach back out to you. So, Gabby, Ooh. I'll read it again just for our, our, our viewers. What were some boundary lines you struggled to keep as a single person? Mm. How did God's wisdom keep you from blurring the lines? What an exciting conversation. Boom. I know, right? Spotlight. Ta -da. Spotlight. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I want to share something that I, I struggled with. This was actually during my college years um, as a single person. Okay. And we hear it all the time. Like, I grew up in church. I, I grew up as a Christian. And, you know, they teach us to, to live in purity, mm -hmm. to save that for after marriage. Yeah. Well, um, back high school to college, you know, I got in a relationship, lived outside of that purity. And I remember um, my church leaders would tell me, like, hey, like, you, you shouldn't be living outside of that. Like, what if, what if you don't marry him? You know, all yeah. these things. But the thing is, like, I never understood why I had to live in purity. It was just like, I know I'm not supposed to. Yeah. But I didn't understand the why, so I didn't obey. I lived mm -hmm. outside of God's, God's um, ruling and whatnot. But then, um, you know, afterwards, af sadly, after I got out of the relationship, that's when God started giving me this revelation of the importance of living in that purity and setting that straight boundary lines. And the fact is, God is holy and He's righteous. Absolutely. Um, yes. And we can't say that we have union with Him if we still have that, you know, that darkness in us. Mm. And this one verse um, that I'm going to share with you guys today really spoke to me during that season of my life. It was in 1 John 1, 5-7, where it says, God is light. In Him there is no mm. darkness at all. If we are to claim to have fellowship with Him and yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with him. And the blood of Jesus purifies us from sin. Wow. And so that's when I like realized like I can know we can we can know about God. We can say we accept him as our savior, but do we really have that union fellowship with him? Yeah. Right. Because no matter what, when we have that sin and if we're living in purity, it, it sin separates us from God. 
That's the reality Absolutely. of it. And God, yeah, he, Jesus came to save us. But like this verse says, right? But if we walk in the light. So we still have to make the choice to walk in the light. Um, and to, to take, God already, Jesus already gave it all. He already, he already died on the cross for us. But we have to make that choice. Amen. And then it reminds wow. me in, um, I think it's in Joshua, Joshua, yeah, Joshua 24. I love this verse where he says, But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, choose yourselves this day whom you will serve. Wow, Ooh. come on, what a powerful Talk statement. Talk about like setting a line like right there. Absolutely. Wow. It's like a choice, right? It is absolutely a choice. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you spoke about how sin separates us from God. What does that look like to, to, our, to our viewers and to us in our everyday lives in, in non-religious jargon? What it looks mm-hmm. like is we sin, so we feel bad. The guilt, shame, and all this makes right. us feel condemned. Mm. But as the scripture you just read, it is a choice. Mm-hmm. And so as long as we're making that choice to be a light, a beacon in, in our homes, in our community, um, you know, we, we, we have that relationship. Right. So I think it's also important that we also discuss with our viewers what that looks like and how it's an everyday choice. Mm. And maybe some of the things we're doing to, sorry to segue, but just to add no, on to, to no, what good. we're sharing with today. Yeah. No. You know? That's that's totally important. Because that's something that was on my heart today. Right. It it is being that lighthouse for my family. I am married, so my walk looks different. But I have been single all my life before that, short but still. (laughs) And and so the Lord was just speaking to me on that and how I have to make a daily choice that either I can live in sin Mm. because we we still live in temptation. That that's that's a given. Uh, I don't care who you are. Uh, um, Everyone from Daniel Kalinda all those giant generals of the faith they still have to deal with temptation mm-hmm. right. so the lord was speaking to me on that kevin choose today how whom you're going to serve who mm-hmm. do you love more god or your sin yeah, mm-hmm. or the good. world and so I, as god was speaking to me on that today um he just showed me what it means to be a light for him mm-hmm. and, and and not just myself as a single but to my family to my yes. wife to my kids and if for myself, if for yourself, you, it is not enough motivation uh, when, when you get married. Let me tell you, that's a big motivator. Mm. Mm. Being that light for the family. Amen. That's awesome. It's, it's great that you're doing that too. Just because so many problems, marriage, all of those things, really, like if, if you're knee deep in sin, if you're knee deep in stuff that you shouldn't be, that's, again, that's going to affect the natural it's yeah. going right. to affect the way that you carry yourself, the way that you love. Like it's sin, love, can't, they can't mix. No. They can't mix at all. Mm-hmm. Um, it's best to be done away with it, repent, get it out, yeah. so that you will be able to feast your eyes on love and feast your eyes on the light, on Jesus. Oh, right. And, and realizing too that the boundaries that God gives us is for our good. Yes, right? Yes. And kind of like what Kevin was saying, during that season when I was outside of the boundaries, I was filled with anxiety, right? I didn't yes. feel love. But it's because I was living outside of what God had created. Like that mm. that's for marriage, right? But I was already doing that outside of it. And no wonder anxiety was getting filled and lack of yeah. peace and all, all right. of that. My goodness. And that's why it's so important, those boundary lines. And I think many times, like I know for myself, just thinking back as a single, like we like to make exceptions, right? And that's... Oh, come on. Yes. And that's what causes the blurred lines, right? Mm-hmm. God already made it straight, but we're like, right. okay, but how there's far an can we go? Yeah, you know, before it's considered sin, right? Yeah. and it doesn't have to be in the in the aspect of living in purity. Mm-hmm. But I'll use yeah. the example of loving someone or saying good things about someone. Like you could mm-hmm. be like, yeah, I know we're supposed to love, but this person is an exception, mm-hmm. right? Like we make like, oh, but yeah. this or but my that's situation good. is. Mm-hmm. But that's we, when we use the word exception. That's when we're really we have to ask ourselves: Are we blurring? the lines oh that's that's really good my goodness yeah what about you man kevin what's so going on this question man, what are some powerful, boundary lines powerful the lord's been speaking to me to, to me on this mm. all day i'm mm. talking from the moment uh, i woke up to being in the gym an hour ago oh uh just, just how powerful it is to have that revelation of uh, boundary lines not just Every other book you read on boundary lines is gonna, and especially as a Christian, is gonna tell you 
uh, where to be, where not to be uh, in the physical <laughs> in, in regards right, to right. dating. But mm -hmm. really what it should focus on is your relationship with Jesus and right. not sacrificing there. The why, That's like the Gabby was line. mentioning, the, yeah. why, the why, why do we it. do this? Yeah. Right. So powerful. Right. And so thinking back in my singleness and my courtship with Cynthia when I was still single mm -hmm. was my relationship with Jesus. Mm -hmm. When we're dating, it's highly important. And um, I, I believe in every Christian's life mm -hmm. is not sacrificing on that aspect. What right. does that look like? That quiet time with Jesus, that mm -hmm. ministry time with Jesus. Mm -hmm. So a part of our church uh, motto is get plugged in. Yes. So... <laughs> It doesn't make sense to get plugged in, then get into a relationship, and then all of a sudden, those roots and that foundation that Jesus has put you right, in it's like gone. is gone. Yeah. It's uprooted. It makes no sense. No sense. All that time invested with Jesus mm -hmm. to sacrifice it for an infatuation. Mm -hmm. Wow. And so uh, that's something we just have to be careful about. And I'm not going to start preaching on infatuation and love right now. Uh, there's great books on that. Feel free to private message me for those. Mm -hmm. uh, I read a lot of them. But uh, again, it was my relationship with Jesus as I'm dating Cynthia mm -hmm. and making sure I wasn't sacrificing because I had to make sure to be the light. Yes. Michael, I don't know if you remember. Well, you, you have to remember. But in oh. my courtship with Cynthia, we had a missions trip. Yeah. Can you imagine if I just gave that uh, up and yeah, decided I would, no, I would be missing a, a roommate? Well, man, aside from that, do you remember all those people we touched? Seriously. In my prayer room, I have a picture yeah. of uh, uh, us at the school, and you're oh, in the picture, and I've got these little kids just hanging on my arms, and they're, they're, they're twirling. Yeah. I'm swinging them That's around. That's why like he's at the gym. Way. Like, he's he just twirling the kids. kids. <laughs> he was just twirling kids. <laughs> and beautiful. that was a blast. They were like, it was like a swing. Like, you were just spinning around, and they're just like, wee. <laughs> Do you remember how much of a blessing we were to those yeah. young youngsters? Yeah. We're, we're talking about kids ages seven, uh, no, five to like young teenagers. Some of those kids had to walk miles just to get to that school. Uh, yeah. The, the computers there were all broken down. There was no internet. But these kids were so smart that they were like, oh, let's put Google Chrome. Since there's no internet, there's like a little dinosaur thing. Yeah. But apparently, like, if you press a button, I forget what it was. I think it was space. The dinosaur starts running, and it's a little mini game. Oh, so I learned kids. something new. I was like, "What?" Because I, I'm I'm used to always having internet connection over there. These kids were able to have such joy yeah. with the things that they had. They didn't know about all the other mm. stuff, yeah. even though they see airplanes in the sky. And yet, we visited that one uh, really poor place. I mean, there was yeah. a outhouse. There Just was to this paint a everything. picture. The, these kids were so malnourished that they had white blotches on their skin from lack of just vitamins and essential nutrients. Wow. This was a, a sad place. I remember us arriving one night to, to a hotel about 10.30 at night, and we're dropping off a couple of packages across mm -hmm. the street to, to store our stuff, mm -hmm. um, supplies that we were giving to these schools. Right. And there was a five-year-old little girl with her little brother, and couldn't have been more than two, and, and they're there on the side of the street, no shoes, Working, begging, begging, yeah. begging for money. And so what we did there, had I sacrificed my relationship with Jesus for relationship, mm. can you imagine yeah. you those people that there, you wouldn't have been, wouldn't have been impacted? An impact. yeah. And so in every area of our life, we have mm, to make sure uh, spiritually that we're not sacrificing and, and look at where I am today. Yeah, we're not and compromising. It yeah, yeah, we're not no compromising, compromise, guys. Yeah. And it doesn't end today. So in my singleness, uh, you know, I had my relationship with Jesus as a married man. That doesn't change today. Right. Mm. And look at the fruit. In the past mm. couple of videos that we've shot, live shows, you see the testimony of my family. Mm -hmm. You see what's happening with my daughter. You yeah. see what's yes. happening there. And yeah. so Beautiful. it's just powerful, Come powerful. On. Praise wow. God. Oh, man, man, that's always that's just so so good, brother so, Michael. Let's see boundary lines that you struggled to keep as a single person. Prepare yourself, guys. Uh, so. I also to live in impurity as well. So before I was a, I became a Christian in 2012. Before that, I had dug already myself deep into a life of sex uh, and whatnot. So outside of marriage, outside of that covenant, I didn't know the why. I always preach abstinence. I was like, "Yo, yeah. I'm gonna save myself for my future, honey." Hey. You know, hey. 
didn't happen at all because the moment that you are getting like a, any kind of relationship especially if you're not in Jesus uh, compromise is just waiting right. around the corner I just had my own strength and obviously we know that we will always fail on our own strength that's why yeah. we need Jesus uh, but even when I became a Christian I wasn't spending good quality time in understanding the why like why is it important to be sexually pure right. why is it important to have boundaries in relationships why is it important to seek God for who the girl is going to be? Because yeah. I wow. ended up going through various relationships. And I mean, over time, they all got like super better. Um, but I can just remember in my, in my beginnings, um, back before 2015, I was still uh, trying my best to not give in to sin. And yeah. so I would do some lines. I would clearly establish some things. But then when temptation came... I would just take the eraser and I would just blur the lines a little bit and I would say, okay, you know what? I can do this act. It's okay. It's mm -hmm. not. It's not bad. You know, it's mm -hmm. not sex. You know, it's yeah. not. It's not like wow. yeah. But anywho, that continuously led down, uh, mm. just downhill, super downhill. Uh, and other things it led me to being depressed. It led me to right. uh, being all that just because I was seeking after pleasure until finally in 2015, I said, God, like I, I need you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Like I, I, I really, I didn't surrender at all in 2012. Uh, mm -hmm. In fact, I still find myself in this constant state of surrender because there are things that the Lord's showing me even now of like, hey, buddy, we need to work on that. And I was just like, oh, thank you, God. Like yes. It's just a constant thing. Right. But what Paul says about really resolutely leaving the past behind that's so vital in this whole boundary line topic mm -hmm. because the only way that we can consistently live a life that is in the newness that is spirit filled yeah. that is guided by the spirit is only if we never have our mind or our thoughts in the past and if something does come answers in scripture it says that we're to hold every thought everything captive onto Christ Jesus and so whenever those things come Oh, Jesus, 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 I know what your word says. Oh, yes. It's ingrained in my heart. And then, boom, those temptations, those things flee. And there's scripture for that, but uh, the thing that I struggled with definitely was making sure that there was firm boundaries because I would always just end up falling to uh, sexual morality, always in those um, past relationships. But then after, yeah, after 2015, um, none of that at all. In fact, mm. it's come to the point now where I remember I read in 1 Corinthians 7, it was where Paul was talking about, I don't even permit that a man touch a woman. I remember reading that verse mm -hmm. and I was like, yo, out of here with that. That's that old zero to 100 AD timeline. We're in the 2000s now. We're in the millennium. Yeah. Um, but I found that, you know, if it's causing someone to stumble, if yes. it causes you to burn right. with lust, uh, it, he says that it's better to marry than to do any of that. Actually, mm -hmm. I was most impacted by the verse in Timothy where Paul instructs him, hey, treat mothers, daughters, all of that with all purity, like yes. like your sisters. So like my sisters in Christ, like I have to treat them with all purity. And if I have like a girlfriend, for example, she's a sister in Christ. I've got to treat her with all purity. Absolutely. There's no way that I can cause her to stumble or allow that at all like I've done in the past. And and I and I prayed for all the all that stuff and I had to forgive myself too because uh it wasn't their fault. Honestly, you have to be accountable for your own actions. Yeah. Right. I led some things on and there were some things that I was just not supposed to do. And so that was my biggest struggle where now God's wisdom in helping me establishing those boundary lines, not kissing. That's one of the biggest things. Like okay. I'm not kissing until we get married. Wow. Like that's, that's what's awesome, going bro. down. I love that. Um, because it's just there's yeah. I get so tempted with that kind of stuff that it's sure. just like I just know. I know myself. Mm -hmm. And Jesus is very like I think he's very clear. I know some people will argue and say, Oh no, kissing's okay in the relationship. Sure. Um, we're not gonna talk about that right now, but I yeah. know that God's wisdom definitely helps me keep me from blurring the lines. Absolutely. By choosing to evade that stuff and making sure that we're we're consistently living out a life of, of purity yeah. and if I'm going to be doing bro. ministry stuff am I going to be in this yeah. talk show if I'm going to be out telling yeah. someone about Jesus I, I know that I have to live it yeah. out yeah. and um, so that's that's where 
Uh, I don't know if you guys wanted to ask me some questions about that before we wow. go into Q and A time, but no, I mean, I don't think I necessarily have a question, but I just want to point out how much I appreciate you, man to man, just what you what you just said. Mm-hmm. I mean, how often, folks, do we hear uh, a powerful statement like that? He he is waiting to kiss until he gets married. How much honor and purity and beautiful, yeah. beautiful uh, that that is, and God is, is going to bless you and reward you, man. Yeah. And I can't, Just I can't that. say that it's not difficult, of course, because like, it's it's difficult. I mean, once you open up the box of, of of sex outside of marriage, it's like every temptation will come at you. But I have hope because here it, it says, "No temptation has overtaken you that's not common to man." Yeah. God's faithful, and He will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, He'll provide a way of escape. That I may be able to flee like uh, like Joseph uh, fleed uh, homegirl. What was it? Uh, the Potiphar's wife. Okay, yeah, Potiphar's yeah. wife. He flee. He was like, well, flee. It says flee youthful lust, flee sexual morality, and that's uh, something that you just do. But it, it takes being with Jesus and delighting in Him. In fact, uh, we'll close it up with this before we go into Q and A time. Uh, the whole boundary lines. Uh, a great verse actually is in Colossians 3.17 I'm taking this out of the Passion Translation I I really love the wording of this because I get to really meditate on it and chew it Uh, and it reminds me of the psalmist when he talks about the beauty of the Lord Mm -hmm. in fact if I had not read that in the Psalms like I would never know that God is beautiful lest the psalmist said that and so Colossians 3.17 reads let every activity of your lives and every word that comes from your lips be drenched with the beauty of our Lord Jesus, the Anointed One, and bring your constant praise to God the Father because of what Christ has done for you. Now, in any other translation, it's like, hey, whatever you do in deed or, uh, or word or act, whatever it is, like do it unto the glory of God. As chosen ones, like we are His chosen ones. And so that's where with this verse, it will be so easy for us to never blur the lines if we stay here. Like if we set our tent and we pitch it and we camp right there and bringing constant praise to God the Father because of what Christ has done for us. When we learn the why in every situation, not just the what, because that's where people mess up. Oh, I'm not supposed to do this, not supposed to do this. Okay, okay, okay. But then they endure with no joy, with no thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, it's when you talk to them, you just know like, oh man, you know, I'm just enduring. (laughs) <laughs> can't wait for this wilderness to be over like no like yeah, Jesus says like we're to count trials with joy yes. as hard as that is there's missionaries there's people out there that are suffering and yet they're counting yes. it joy like oh like even in the book of Acts they got beaten up and they said oh my gosh guys we got beaten up for Jesus blessed are those that are persecuted for righteousness sake Yeah. for theirs is the kingdom and so with that said it's Q&A time it is. So, guys, the whole boundary lines. What are some things? We'll talk about the question again. Yeah, yeah let's reread that one. What were some boundary lines that you struggled to keep as a single person? Now, how did God's wisdom keep you from blurring the lines? Now, did we have anyone already share anything in that regard? No, no. Or not, even any questions? in that regard. Um, we, we have a couple of comments coming in, and, and we've got quite a few viewers. So, if you've got any questions... I um, trust that you are typing them now or testimonies, yes. even if something you're going through right yeah. now that, uh, you know, you're still not through, but right. you right. want to share. And if you're driving, don't even don't even write. <laughs> nope. <laughs> so uh, I believe this name is. Oh, you need help. You need help here. Oh, Desi. You Desi. Oh, she Desi. goes, oh, my gosh. What you are saying so hit me, Michael. There is an actual switch in my life old life versus new life oh praise god i mean it's his it's him but this this devotional is really really awesome like guys yeah. pick it up it's a weekly devotional i've never heard of such a thing yeah I, i'm used to daily devotionals and we meditate on it daily but when you camp in some place for a week uh you there's a place there for each week where you actually get like a lot of notes uh now i'm in what we're not in week seven so this is why this is blank but you actually get to really fill it out like every day that you choose to spend time and say god okay what are you speaking to me in regards to this week's devotion or what are you speaking it eventually just fills up kind of like how gabby has over here with all kinds of notes in there um so praise god desi amen amen so uh keep your comments coming in brian he's funny 
He goes, uh, if you get tempted, you can always have a Hershey's kiss. <laughs> hey, <laughs> Brian. Brian, the man. funny guy. He is funny. As long as it's not mint chocolate, because who puts mint with chocolate? Yeah. No. <laughs> so don't, don't, got, don't, uh, don't hurt me in the comment section. We've got something here from Angie. I'm now single for three years after a 15-year marriage. The challenges I've come across with setting boundaries is the flirting. Flirting might seem mm. innocent, but it is not. Mm. People nowadays that can take flattery and flirting to a whole nother level mm. and can get out of control. So setting those boundaries is a must from the beginning. And it goes both ways, men and women both. Amen, Angie. That's good. Yeah, a absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Any thoughts? I like it a lot because we, if we don't set boundaries, boundaries, the purpose of it is to prevent us from falling into temptation. And that's what I love about you is you apply God's wisdom and mm -hmm. where to set those boundaries so that you wouldn't fall. Mm -hmm. And you're really trying to flee from that. Mm -hmm. Where some people I know are just the opposite. Like, oh, sh it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Right? Right. Um, where we should just it's set. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. Like if this is your Downhill. temptation, if yeah. this is your temptation line, mm -hmm. don't make your boundary here. Like you should set up, you should give it some space. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and then don't rush the process. Right. I I, I think what's so important when you're talking about flirting, being flirtatious, is it's the initial attraction. Mm -hmm. It's when you're just beginning to know someone. That's mm -hmm. when most likely you're beginning to flirt. Mm -hmm. uh, now there's a difference between being complimentary, uh, right. like Michael. Great shirt today, man. Oh, thank you. You look good. Thank you know, I'm recognizing yeah. that versus, well, you're a terrible, terrible example. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't. <laughs> but I feel like your shirt, nice shirt, man. Hey, man, well you want it, bro? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, here you go. Uh, but what I'm trying to say is, let me get back to the point, and, and then it's, um, with flirting, we're, we're rushing the process. Mm. I want you to That's enjoy good. the the. the not necessarily courtship, but the getting to know the person. Right. Yeah. And and Chris Wataka, who who was a uh, guest speaker to our past conferences, she's uh, been on our she live had a shows. Great thing to say, man. She is she she's got a great concept about this getting yeah. to know process. Yeah. She calls it an intentional friendship. Yes. yes. And it, it's one of the most powerful concepts I've ever heard of. And, mm -hmm. and and had I known about it prior to dating my wife, I probably would have taken that. Yeah. But the Lord had a plan. Amen. And now I've got a beautiful family. Woo! Yes, yes. amen. That's so good. And uh, so I, I just love that concept. Mm -hmm. Wait, get to know the person and slow down with the flirtatious. Yeah. -ness. And for those that like you're you unintentionally flirt, because uh, I get that a lot apparently. Because uh, from yeah. people, they're like, hey, bro, it sounds like you're flirting. I was like, no, I'm not. I'm just being nice. Yeah, you're really nice. Um, but, but that's. That's where, like, I know some people tend to struggle with that, too, because then it's yeah. like, I have always asked myself, like, okay, Lord, how do I, like, not be nice then? Because then I don't feel like <laughs> I'm myself. And so then yeah. I'm, I'm trying to be someone uh, there. And so it's it's always different because for some people it may seem as flirting, but then for some people it doesn't. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I wonder if people even there in the, in the, in the audience, like, also ends up struggling with that, too. I remember, yeah, I remember even at Starbucks, this 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 guy even hit on me, but I didn't know how he was hitting on me. I was just yeah. being nice to him, but apparently he was hitting on me. Yeah. So that, Man. Was, that was really funny. I've so. got that issue of being too nice too, <laughs> but I'm not going to do anything against it. My wife right. knows mm -hmm. right. and it's a great way to start conversation. Mm -hmm. right. It's a great way to, by, by loving another person, yeah. it allows you to then bring up Jesus. It allows you to prophesy and, and, and do something yes. incredible. It allows you an yes. opportunity to get to know a person right. and offer healing if they need it. Right. Right. And my goodness, what a smile does. Amen. You know, it but does. Michael Job. My brother from another mother. Oh, you're so good on Sunday. Oh, guys, wow. yeah. <laughs> My brother Michael Job says, Ways to stay away from temptation. I ask God to take away what I am being tempted with. In our weaknesses, mm. God's strength is made perfect. If it is lost, I ask him to take it out. If depression, I draw near to God. Drawing near mm. to God in adoration to him will draw your heart closer to him. As you draw near to God, temptation uh, falls away. Amen, and That is Michael. so true. Get into that quiet place. Mm -hmm. Find your time. Meet Jesus where Jesus has you in that season. Mm -hmm. Because it all looks different. Yeah. We all don't have an awesome prayer closet yet. I do now. 
But you've got to meet Jesus. And that was something Jesus was speaking to me today. Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. as I'm in the gym, you've got to meet Jesus. And other people have to meet Jesus. We can't mm-hmm. expect them to meet a, meet Jesus where we are in our right. lives. Mm-hmm. But you've got to meet Jesus in your season. Uh, or by yeah. someone else's revelation of who he is. Absolutely. Like, we need to have those encounters. Like, it's... I, I understand where some people are like, oh, no, I don't need an encounter like that. Like, no, no, no. Like, you, like you need an encounter right. with God. Like, if you, when you have that encounter with him something breaks like right. it's just it's like all of a sudden th- the reality of the scriptures comes even more into life again and then suddenly you're like whoa god you're you're so you're so real and then it just makes you long for him more yeah. and Absolutely. want him more and we should always be thirsty for this we should always be hungry for these kind of encounters Absolutely. uh throughout our whole christian life yeah absolutely yeah. But that's a good point, too, because as we draw closer to God, we start desiring what He desires, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? That whatever that may be. So that's, yeah. Thank you, Michael. Great point. And Michael Job, sorry. (laughs) Uh, So we've got about four minutes left. If you've got any testimony questions, feel free to share them. I am viewing uh, them live as they come in. Amen. Yeah. Wow, Wow. what a powerful night. Powerful night talking about boundary lines and just the Holy Spirit. Come on. But you declaring, know. man. Like, the, the power of declaration. I'm really realizing this. Like, the power of declaring what the Word says uh, and just giving it life. Because mm. too often we give in to the negative thoughts. And too often we give in to the old ways of thinking when we're supposed to be renewing our minds. But if no one teaches us what that looks like, then how will we ever do that? Yeah. And so I, I think it's beautiful how in the book of Acts... They didn't, they didn't have this. They didn't have this. Mm. Like, I get to have the Bible here in my hand everywhere that I go. I mean, we have phones. We carry the Bible with us everywhere. But the disciples, they had to, you know, the, the scrolls, the Torah, like all of that. But like the New Testament, I can only imagine when the letters came in. Like when the letters came in, like, hey, by the way, read this to the church at Ephesus. Here, here's the letter. I can only, if I was there, I'd be like, yo. Oh my gosh, I want to know. I want to know what this letter says. I need to know what this letter says so that I can live this lifestyle out consumed by the Holy Spirit. So I think it's 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 just so exciting, man. Um, when you declare the Word, when you declare the, the life that's in it. Uh, because that's all they had. I mean, they had to memorize. As right. kids growing, they had to memorize the Word. Mm-hmm. And as you do that, I think uh, there is no, there's no other way but to you know sing a psalm to the lord when you remember them blessed is the man who delights in the law of the lord psalm one i, I know that song i know that song because of a, a reggae song <laughs> yo that reggae song is amazing i'm not used to reggae yeah. but when i heard psalm one in reggae form i sing psalm one all you the have time to send now. it to me i'll send it to you it's but amazing. That, that's, that's a good note to leave us on michael um if you wouldn't mind no i don't out, I, man no i don't And thank you guys, all of you guys, for for being here with us. Uh, Again, you guys can come every single time, Tuesday at 8.30 p.m., share it. Uh, We'll have this videos and uh, and all the previous ones on YouTube as well, uh, so that you guys can always just view them, can listen to them, and I believe there's also on SoundCloud uh, as well. And so with that said, we'll just get straight into prayer. And so, Father, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you that we get to come in here, God, and talk about the boundary lines, God. Uh, and talk about the blurred lines, the gray. God, I pray, Lord, that we as a body, God, would only continue to enforce the boundary lines, God. And if, Lord, right now I pray for any one of us, Lord, whether here, whether in the uh, Facebook Live, for those that are going to be listening to this. God, I pray that if there's lines that need to be drawn, God, I thank you, Lord, that you would impress it upon them, Lord, and that they would listen to you and that they would obey, God. I pray, Lord, that if they're in shame, guilt, condemnation for the past, God, I thank you, Lord, that they would come to you in repentance, Lord, and just believe, that they would just believe, regardless of what they feel, that they would believe that you have forgiven them, God, that you love them with a steadfast love, Lord, and that, boom, they get to stand up, God, and continue in the steps, Lord, that you have ordained for them, God, not looking to the past anymore or any of those blurred lines. And so, God, we thank you that we're a people that don't ride the line, that we trust you with everything that we do. And so, Lord, we love you. We honor you. We thank you. Bless us so that we may be a blessing to others. In Jesus' name, amen. Love you guys. See you next.